Okay, everybody, have a seat. Uh, let's get started. So, my name is Mika Solmela. I'm the executive director of the Robot Framework Foundation. And a big welcome from my side. So I'm very happy that we have this meetup today. Uh, we have here, well, may maybe some people are still arriving, but there was supposed to be around 50 people, but I guess we are half of that, roughly, as of now. But still, um, on the stream, there will be also more people. And regardless, I, I think we have a really, really good lineup today. So at least I'm really excited to have have all of you here today. Um, about me, so what I do is basically I, I run and trying to scale up best uh, of my abilities to Robot Framework Foundation with uh, support of the board and, and also work groups and other volunteers helping out. And, and that's my main, main uh, reason of being. And if you have not heard about the Robot Framework Foundation, uh, very quickly, so what we do is that we support the Robot Framework tool and the ecosystem at the community. Uh, that means uh, also funding, but at the same time keeping it active and alive. And in the end, of course, we are about the people, so all of you. All of you are the community, and for us, the most important thing is the community, of course. And that, that's why I'm so happy that we, we have one of these meetups today. And also, I would like to invite all of you to our next meetup, uh, 14th of November. It's not launched yet, but it will be here in Helsinki as well. And maybe we have something in between. Let's see. If you want to make something happen, let me know. So let's, let's do it. Uh, Still, maybe a few, few more things about the Robot Framework Foundation. So uh, we have here today one of uh, or two of our great partners. So we have Robocon, uh, Robocorp and Sealy. And basically, both of them are uh, also Robot Framework Foundation members. And what does it mean to be a Robot Framework Foundation member is that you chip in a bit of your money. There is an annual membership fee. And basically, we pool all of that money together in a bigger, bigger development budget, and then we use it to develop the tool further. And we hope to get more companies to join. So if your company is not a member yet, now is a good time to apply. Let me know, and let's, let's have a discussion. Uh, that's, that's it from the foundation. Then what we are looking at today is that we, we have three awesome uh, speakers. So first, we, we can have Aki and follow up by two Mikkos. Uh, those are very traditional Finnish names, so <laughs> don't be confused. Uh, today's night um, angle is uh, Robot Framework and RPA, and, and as we got to more and more into this discussion about today's meeting and, and the agenda and what to do here today, it, it came clear that, well, the AI is kind of, ki kind of there, there luring in the background, and. And that's kind of also one of the things that we're going to be addressing today with the RPA angle. So at least let's see what the speakers will present to us. But uh, uh, I think AIS is on everybody's mind at this point of time. And let's see what, what we can present today with, with that. I would now like to ask all of you to turn off your mobiles if you haven't yet it's just not to get any disturbance so just uh, silence please and with that also i would like to encourage you to ask any questions from our speakers probably they will indicate whether they want questions in the end or between their presentation but uh, vivid conversation is very welcome and that's also in the chat as well so please, uh, if you are on the stream, feel free to ask questions, and uh, I will do some moderation there and, and try try to pull some questions for the speakers from the chat as well. Uh, if you feel like coming up to the stage to ask, that's fine, or or you can just kind of wave and ask for a microphone. So let's let's try to <laughs> facilitate that for you. Uh, We'll be having three presentations, and, and there is a break in between. And tonight we'll end at least here in Helsinki with uh, some mingle and beers and, and so forth. So uh, big uh, welcome again from my side. 
And I would now invite the first speaker, uh, Aki Hokkanen, to the stage. So big applause to Aki. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I know that Aki has also uh, been helping out a lot uh, with the facilitation and, and kind of, I, I really want to thank you personally as well for, for uh, making this happen. So thank you. No worries. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm here to talk to you about using generative AI as part of an RPA process. Let's see if this works. Something seems to be happening. Huh? Yes? Perfect. Black screen. Let's do this. Maybe this will help. No? I thought I'd inter introduce myself since most of you probably have never seen me. So my name is Aki Hokkanen. I work as a senior consultant and a tribe lead for Sealy Scaler. So Scaler is the RPA team for Sealy. And my job as a tribe lead is to uh, take care of the competence and look for new opportunities within RPA. I've been working for Sealy for the past three years, almost. And what I like to do on my free time is go climbing. I will probably go next week to Ahvenanmaa to climb a bit. And something I don't like as much is shopping for groceries. And this is actually what inspired me to do the demo that I'm going to present to you in a bit. So the agenda for my speech is first I'm going to introduce some technical terminology because I'm going to be using some terms that you've probably never heard of. So then it's easier to keep up. Then I'm going to also talk about the ideology on how we develop our robots. After which I'll introduce the demo and then do the demo. And then I'm going to talk a bit about common pitfalls with generative AI in RPA processes, and then how I would improve the shop bot that I created in uh, the future. The other use cases is actually not happening because I forgot to delete that. I'm sorry about it. So the terminology, when we talk about single items that we use or what we want to automate, we talk about task objects. So it could be like an email that we get from the inbox, inbox, and then we do something with it. Then we also split these RPA workflows into stages. So we have different logical parts of the process, which could be like reading the emails from the inbox, or it could also be uh, providing the info from the email into a certain uh, and uh, site, for instance. So what we call uh, the creating stages like a producer. So it produces these task objects for us. And then we have consumers which use these created tasks ob task objects to complete the task. Then for us, one robot is one business process. Our stack enables us to run different stages in parallel, so if we have one stage that is very slow compared to others, we can dynamically also increase the amount of uh, virtual machines on which we run the robot for the particular stage. Also, uh, contrary to uh, commercial RPA, we run our stages before the tasks. This basically translates to uh, so that we run a single stage before, and then we once all of the task objects have been processed for the stage, then we move to the next stage. So, Shopbot. Shopbot is a uh, robot that asks OpenAI's API to provide me with a recipe, and then it goes to ask website and orders the needed ingredients for the recipe. 
I created this because every week we use Askaupat to order food, but it takes probably an hour, hour and a half for me to complete the order. So this is meant to uh, make the process go faster. And for now, at least it's been working pretty well. So the producer, it asks the OpenAI API to provide me with a recipe, and then the consumer stage navigates to the website and does the RPA workflow. So now it's time for the demo. Let's see how this uh, goes. Wait, no, this one. A little bit of technical difficulties. There. So uh, I actually started this robot a bit or a while ago, and here you can see that it, the API returned the following recipe. I'm sorry this is in Finnish, so it might be a bit hard to understand. But what it basically returned to me is a chicken and vegetable wok. And here you can see uh, the ingredients needed. It's going to need some chicken fillets, paprika, uh, carrots, I think that's aubergine, then onion and soy sauce and some other stuff. Uh, what you will also notice in a bit, we have this in stock, which is just a Python array. It holds all of the stuff I have currently at home, so I don't actually need to order those again from the web store. So let's see what happens now. So now it's going to create the task object, and it tells us that uh, there's one waiting. And what, is, what it is doing now, it's confirming the delivery or the shop I want to deliver or get the items from. And then it confirmed the time and date on when I want the delivery. So now it is actually ordering all of the items. And what is really cool about this as a RPA developer is I don't actually have to navigate or any of the sites. I can just use the search, search box, and from there I can get all of the items I need. So I don't have to wait for the page to load or anything like that. So what it ordered for me right now is chicken fillets, paprika, uh, some carrots. I think that's an aubergine still. Then onion, and some soy sauce. And now that I close it, it's done. But what you can probably tell is I didn't actually complete the order, nor did I even sign in. So the common pitfalls is definitely getting, or using an unattended robot is probably not viable as of now. The in or responses you get from, wait, let me put it better. There we go. So the responses you get from the API can be pretty wild. And all of the recipes are pretty much untested. Also, if you imagine a use case that we don't actually uh, use the API to produce items, we could, uh, said before, uh, getting reliable messages from the API is not trivial. I've specified for the robot to um, act as it's providing a input for a robot, but it still wants to uh, give me random pleasantries. And now that I didn't want to create a parser for it because I'm using an API or AI model, so it's not that great all the time, but I'm still working on improving the prompt. Also, the ingredients and amounts provided can be very inaccurate, and if you think about a uh, normal family, it might vary between the different uh, families on how much they actually want to eat. Also, the recipes are untested, so the food might turn out pretty questionable. So how would I 
improve the shop bot in the future? Well, it's using askaupat.fi, so fine-tuning the model to include recipes from Yhteisyvä would definitely uh, broaden the scope of recipes that I get. If I run the producer stage, probably 20 times I'm going get to start getting uh, the same recipes over and over again. Also adding product data uh, to have prices and nutritional values into the scope of the LLM would allow us to create a solution in which we could also define that I want to spend 400 euros a month, create me a meal plan for the month, and this would be pretty awesome in my opinion because it, it would allow you to estimate your costs of living a bit better. Uh, also, now that we're ordering the food, probably the package size isn't what we actually need for the recipe. So having an ingredient list, which is better than a Python array, would be pretty cool, because then I would always know what I have in stock, and then I wouldn't have to order all of the stuff or go check my cabinets, what I have currently at home. Also, gathering feedback from the portion sizes and adjusting the portion size according to my needs would be pretty cool. So, at the end, I would still want to show a bit about the code because I think it was pretty trivial to do this, except for the prompt. Can you maybe zoom in a bit for people to see better? Uh, yes, once I figure that out. Uh, da -da -da -da. Let's see. Uh, can we zoom here? Right there, zoom in. Is it better now? Still? And now it should be readable. So I started the robot with this command. What this basically does, it calls the Python for the run pi, and then it gives these random parameters. The 0 and 1 are the stages that I use, which are here. And the pro this is the producer, and this is the consumer. And then I gave it an environment flag, so I'm running this in development. This basically just means that I'm using my local MongoDB as a backend for the uh, app right now. So, as you can see here, uh, I'm using the Robot Framework API to get the content. And what this actually do does is do the um, call the OpenAI API. And here I have the content that you saw previously, which is this one. And then I just load it as a Python dictionary, which then returns back to here. And this creates the task object for me. So if we want to look from the database, it's probably this one. So here we have the, let's see if I can make it a bit bigger. There we go. So we have this status, which is pass, and then we have a stage, which is one. So it has passed stage one. And then in the payload, we have the content that we received from the API. And the ingredients here uh, are the ones we ordered. It also generates me instructions on how to do the food. And maybe later on, I will also create third stage, which will then email me the recipe so I can actually uh, do the food that is ordered. If we go back to the stage one, uh, this is pretty simple Python as well. So what I do here is I get the ingredients from the payload, and then for the uh, ingredients, I take the ingredient and then I just fill into the 
text. So I'm using browser library to do the automation here. And one thing I thought was pretty good about the uh, website, I know I'm using expats, which is probably not the best, but for this site it was really good because we have this data test ID. So what I basically did was I opened up a debug console and I just coded all or got the locators and I coded the robot into the uh, debugger and then I got the working robot pretty much in one go, which was pretty nice. Uh, do we have any questions about this or anything I've talked about? Yes. Yeah, can you show the prompt that you were using? Yes, sorry. That, that's probably pretty uh, important. So here is the prompt I'm using. So first, I defined a system role. I gave it um, pretty much just saying that it's a, you're a skilled chef, and your aim is to provide me with quick and easy recipes. And that's probably a lot of text. I have this one in English. This is pretty close to what the actual prompt is. But I'm telling it to uh, consider the following example. And then I'm defining a problem, a solution, a description about the problem. And then I'm also defining a JSON schema that I want it to return. Uh, did, did you, like, has the has it been responding like with valid JSON all the time, or has there been any problems with? No, uh, it hasn't been responding. So, uh, for instance, here, it's actually responded an array containing a JSON object. Then let's see. Uh, this is pretty good. Then it give, gives me these random pleasantries that I don't want. Of course, like I said, I could create a parser and take those out. But if I'm using an AI, I kind of want it to work. But these are the most common issues I have currently with it. But it's still ongoing, the development. So okay. Nice. Thank you. Yes. More questions? Go ahead. Yeah. And um, what happens when um okay, what happens when the um the item is out of stock? What does the robot do? Um uh, currently it doesn't know that because how the ask but works is that if it's out of stock it's going to get replaced with a similar product. But there's not um or as far as I know, there isn't any uh like notification if uh, something is out of stock. But then again, if we go look, uh, let me open this. So if I, for instance, want to look for chicken, there's plenty of chicken products. So because my um, responses that I'm getting from the AI is, are, they're so um, generic, so it will probably always find something like at least similar to what is requested. The other question I have is um, as regards the payment. So it's maybe it's something to look at in the future or if you've not done it yet. Um, if the, c the card you have, now you bypassed login, right? Yes. For the purpose of this demo. But eventually, when you ask the card, you have to put in your login details. So where does that come from? And um, if you already have stored your login details somewhere for the robot to fetch it and the card is almost expired or has expired, is there feedback also? Well, for now, I use .env to manage all of my secrets. Um, I'm going to show the template, not the actual secrets. But as you can see here, there's uh, the uh, task object storage, which I use as the back end. Is, uh, it requires the DB credentials, so database credentials. And then it, it also has the open API key. So I would store the secrets here, and then they would be in scope for the robot to use. Does that answer the question? Um, it doesn't help. But if, the, if your cards 
have expired. If your card has expired, what happens then? I think the payment would get cancelled, but uh, I think it's like for now, as this is just my own project, I kind of am solely responsible on keeping the um, credentials current. Okay, just a moment. There is another question. Hi, Aki. Good to Hi, see Otto. you. Thanks for the presentation. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, did you exper experiment with few shot examples? Uh, no, not, not as of yet. All right. No, I had good luck uh, with a similar, similar case where I'm asking for a JSON output and uh, giving few shot examples. So in this case, you would output this and so and so. Okay. Like, even even a couple of them, I've had, I've had the model very consistently re respond with, you know, good usable JSON. And I don't know if you've had look at Langchain library. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So in, in there you will find that it's like there is a functionality that you can uh, very readily take take for that kind of okay. approach. So yeah. Good to hear. Yeah, I actually experimented a bit with Langchain, but then I found that calling the API directly is way easier. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, it's I've had good experience, but uh, okay. Let's talk more after. Yes. Thank you. Are right, there some more questions? Okay. Uh, Mika, there. Oh, my apologies. Just a moment. Thanks. Uh, this is a very important question. Have you tried any of the recipes yet? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was an important question indeed. Still some more questions from anybody? I think I have a question. What would you do if you were to develop this further as an, let's say, not as a hobby project, but a commercial project? How, how would you kind of, would you keep the setup more or less similar or, or would you change something, something there? Um, well, if, if you really want to create a solution about this, I think going with RPA is the wrong choice at the end of the day, because, well, you couldn't really have all of the access, or nor do you want people to run RPA from their own devices. You would probably want to integrate this into an app or something. So then you would probably do it directly with API calls. Okay, thank you. I, I think that's a kind of important point about kind of like a bit difference between um, something that you want to do a bit less commercial than, than kind of when you do it in a full scale. <laughs> but still, uh, it's a really interesting project and at least I'm waiting to, to get it in use personally. So <laughs> 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 thank you for the project and the presentation. Uh, let's let's have a quick break um, and then continue. I think with Mikko uh, in ten minutes or so. Yes. Okay. Thanks. No.